throughout centuries and generations. The local church stands as God's idea for the spiritual growth of every believer. And so, here at Celebration Church, we are on a mission to partner with you for your progress and joy in the faith. Even as we obey the great commission to preach the gospel to every creature and raise disciples of every nation, our purpose is to know Christ and to make him known to a billion souls in 10,000 cities. At Celebration Church, we envision men, women, and even children of every tribe and every tongue celebrating endless life in Christ Jesus. This is who we are. In Christ, for Christ, with joy. Hello, good morning, and welcome to service. We are so thrilled to have you join us today for another uplifting time in fellowship with the Lord and other believers. Well, service starts in a few minutes, so here are a few things that you need to do to get yourself ready. First of all, jump right out of bed and ditch the covers. You might be watching online, however, if this is still a service and you're still in church. Secondly, make the most of this time by getting yourself into a more suitable position. Especially one that doesn't encourage you falling asleep or other distractions. Next, please ensure to get your pen, your notepad, and your Bible ready so that you can make copious notes as you watch the sermon and also read the scriptures as they come. Also, do ensure to participate, pray along, worship along, and give. Do as if you're physically present in the church building. Finally, if you know someone that should be here right at this moment, why not invite them by sharing them in links to this live stream? as I'm sure they're going to be as blessed as you most certainly will be. Once again, on behalf of our lead pastor, I welcome you to church today. Do have a swell time in service. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. There is fire on my altar. Fire on my altar. I put fire on my altar. If Elijah called it, I can. Fire.
Hallelujah. All right, please open your Bibles to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 4, verse 31. Amen. And it says, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. Amen. So we are going to be praying this morning. And we would say, as we pray in this service... We fill this place with the glory of God. Because we have prayed, everything the power of God can accomplish is made possible. Why don't you turn that to prayer this morning? Go ahead and begin to pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. In today's service, everything is made possible in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes, go ahead and fill this place with the glory of God this morning. Declare that you would never leave here the same way you came in the name of the Lord Jesus. Rapatapa yes today you will not be distracted today you do away with mediocrity in the name of the Lord Jesus the power of God is made available to bring answers to bring solutions in the name of the Lord Jesus Rosondo koto livi lipi lipi to sushi fili akande redebe rabaka shande rokos raki zunda katai oh glory rabene ziano shte fili prati lakande kuzikata eshoto ya. Thank you, Jesus. Malivi la kataya. Thank you, Jesus. Record to livra deja. I. This is your service. This is your service. La koto livra da basekete. I hope you're praying this morning. Rade shiara shiara. Alava katalika. Hey, zu meki anai. Leko se fraila hasha. Apana makata la kata ye, loso koto ni frata bahai. Zifa ne metepe, ratish te libra nosa. Zeka teka tepe 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 te, roto so koto ni frata baya. Zia ne shokosa, ay elonde velika. Oh glory to God, reno zika te libra dabaya. Thank you Lord Jesus. Ezo vene mekata libra dabaya. Thank you, Father. I am not such a friend. Ila kandela poche. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Are you ready to take your confession? Amen. Are you ready? Glory to God. Hallelujah. So you repeat after me. The glory of God is present here. 
the power of God is mighty here. My heart is receptive to flow in the spirit. Hallelujah. My spirit is alert. I flow in the spirit like never before. Hallelujah. Raise your hands and say, these hands, they heal. Touch your ears and say, these ears, they hear. Touch your eyes and say, these eyes, they see by the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Say with me, Holy Spirit, I am ready. Holy Spirit, I am ready for all you have for me in this service. My heart is open and I am forever changed. If you believe it, shout glory. Come on, are you still rejoicing? Are you still rejoicing? The Bible says Jesus rejoiced in the spirit. You know how he did it? He jumped. Come on, jump. He spin. Come on, spin. And he ran. Ay, 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 ay. Tell your neighbor, ne resurrection power. Let's go. Come on. Put your hands together. Woo! We're about to celebrate the greatness of our God. Hey! Come on! Aya! Everybody say yo!
Rabaliate, Sepedia Talmaniato, Sound the name of Jesus all over the road, Shampaniate Balapani. Jesus, 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 oh Jesus, your name is the 
Therefore God has exalted him and given him a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth and every tongue should confess. Like I would say, I wasn't calling for your attention. I just said in the name that is above every other name. The name that is, that is respected in the heavens, on the earth, and beneath. So I'm going to give you another opportunity. I said, in the name of Jesus we have prayed. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. I want you this morning to turn with me to 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4. And we will read together because this is God's word to you and me. All right. One, two, go. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Can someone say greater? Greater. Oh, glory to God. This text is declaring the victory that you have. It is telling you what your backup is. What your defense is. What system of victory that God has given you, the believer. So no matter what you face in this life, you have won already. That's what I came to declare to you this morning. That no matter the temptation, no matter the frustration, you have won already. Someone is looking at me. They don't know that they should declare over themselves already. I have won already. Oh, so we will pray this morning. And I want you to say, we are firm. Our authority and victory in Christ. We declare that there is no spell, no attack, no enchantment against us because we have overcome. Can you make that your prayer right now? Oh, Sadabara Monocombrate. Oh, Samene Combron de Belekiba. Oh, feel free to declare no enchantment against Enoch, no enchantment against Enoch's family, no enchantment, no spell, no spell, no enchantment, no divination, no sorcery can prosper against me. I have overcome, I have overcome. Rada Bakele Monde, Sumana Ilikapai, Ezebele Debele Combratai, Ecombreco Simratai, Igabaru Anekapale Monde, Sebele I have overcome, I have overcome, I have overcome, I have overcome. Oh, Balage Amane, because greater, greater, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Kelemonda by Amayata. Take a money. 
Eporra Capalo Zupe, Ramana Capale, Ilaporia Tai, Ekepelamone, Calamane, Isupe, Aruane, Canemoi, Ibene, Aruana, Icapai, Iboi, Icape, Aruate, Isopa Nima, Oya Catabale Palatai, Arana Mokove, Abano Bele. prophetic moment. Wherever you are, forget the person next to you. I want you to declare and rejoice and say, I've got my victory. 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 I have won. I have won. I have won. Hallelujah. We will yet pray again. And I want you to turn with me to Isaiah chapter 44, from verse 24 to 25. It says, Thus said the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself that frustrated the talkings of the liars and make it diviners mad that turn it wise men backward and make it their knowledge foolish see God through the prophet Isaiah is declaring his sovereignty that he is God and God alone that he is the maker of the heavens and the earth that he laid the foundations by his own hands. And he is saying that he rules in the affairs of men. He can frustrate diviners. He can frustrate liars. And he alone is the protector and keeper and redeemer of us and his church. So this morning we will pray. We will yet pray again. And I want you to say with me, in the name of Jesus. Oh, make it like it means something to you. In the name of Jesus. We pray right now and bring to naught the plans of the devil concerning the church at large and particularly celebration church. God will glorify himself through our lives oh make that time of prayer count right now oh we pray for the church all over the world we pray for the church in africa we pray for the church in europe in asia all over the world we pray for celebration church we pray for every church in nigeria Simon de Levi, Ekabalo Bole 
Balatai, Raga Balakom Roto Boy, Isa Bale. Every plan of the devil is void. Every plan of the devil is brought or not. Mato Rakatai, Esta Pelabon de Pele, Ika Palia Tombre, Saka Palata Palate, Raga Palata Palata. Can you hold your hands? Hold the hands of your neighbor to your left and to your right as you pray. Hold the hands of your neighbor to your left and to your right and declare that we bring the plans of the devil to naught in the church. Rako Sibataye. Menekabayamane. Sobani Bako Sibalatai. Ekebana In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Are you ready to take your confession now? Say with me, no power is greater than the power of Jesus. No dominion is above the domination of Jesus. No principality is greater than his ability. No enchantment is greater than his influence. No devil comes close. No devil comes close to his majesty. <laughs> I want you to pause and say this next one like it means something. I am in the name of Jesus. I am in Jesus. Therefore, every power, every dominion, every principality, every enchantment, every devil is under my feet. Is under my feet. Is under my feet. Declare to me and say, from today onward, I am more conscious than ever before of my authority as a believer. As the Israel of Jesus, I declare that no enchantment, no spell, no divination or weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. Instead, instead, demons flee. They flee the door when I step in. Evil spirits disappear at my command. No manipulation of the enemy can operate around me. My family and every member of my local church Every plot of the devil against me and my loved ones dies a supernatural death today. I trample upon them by the power of the Holy Ghost as I march on a consistent, perpetual, never ending, ever triumphant victory parade it is my destiny to show forth the power of God to the world I do this in every place I do this in every way glory concerning CCI Global this year we step into ownership. 
we make supernatural and physical landmarks in every city that a door of utterance has been opened to us. Individually and collectively, we receive mandates and mantles to take territories for Jesus. We destroy every satanic architecture and create kingdom edifices. We reach a billion souls in 10,000 cities until the kingdoms of this world become the kingdom of our God. Can you say glory to God? Glory to God. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. When you keep on rejoicing, give the Lord a shout in his roar. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Isaiah 57, or 54 rather, verse 17. And it says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. He said, you will condemn every tongue that rises against you, you know. And he says, this is his heritage for his servants. He says, this is their reward from him, the Lord. And I want you to lift your hands this morning as someone who the Lord has given an heritage. An heritage of protection. An heritage of power. Can you pray in the Holy Ghost this morning? Please, do not take this moment lightly. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray as someone that has power. The book of Romans 8.31 says, What then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can stand against us? Through the fire, through the flood, through the valley, through the mud, I won't worry, I won't fear, because no weapon formed against me shall prosper. No, no, it will work. No weapon for the against me shall lift your voice and say through through the flood through the valley through the mud I won't worry. I won't worry. I won't fear. This is a confession for someone this morning. There's no weapon against me. Shall prosper. No, 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 no. It works and no weapon. On the game. to this part. It says, say, and when I think that I can't make it, I'm reminded that you don't fail. And when I think that I Reminded that you would fail when I think so. When I think that I can make it, I'm reminded that you would fail. When I think that I 
God. I have the God the Father, God the Son, I walk with host of spirit, three of them join, I get back. Huh? My God. Can you lift your voice and sing the song? Sing. I walk with God the Father. Say, I walk with God the Father. 
Let me tell you something I've realized. Every opportunity you have to rehearse the word of God, don't waste it. You see the wordings of that song, you will need it one day. Because if you don't know you have backing, someone else who knows they have backing will challenge you. And it is the people with negative spirituality that are usually the loudest, boldest, audacious, challenging people. Mm, don't try me. What about you? You know, there are some people, they can just look at in the mirror, say some few words, and their life will go down the drain. But what about you? Hallelujah. What if you had the confidence of the prophet and you are praying that God should open the eyes of others? Lord, open their eyes so that they will see that there are more with us than with them. See, I have back end. Listen, I'm not trying to hype you up. This is warfare. You will need this one day. The Lord is teaching your fingers to fight. Say, I have backing. Say, no weapon formed against me shall ever prosper. Say, it didn't work yesterday. It's not working today. It will never work tomorrow. Say, there is no enchantment against my life, against my health, against my finances. Say, no divination against my lineage. Say, God content with they that content with me. Say, my children are safe. My business is safe. My family is safe. Say, I walk with a host of angels. Say, I walk with God the Father. I walk with God the Son. I walk with the Holy Ghost. Say, I have back it. Say, the pillar of cloud. Hallelujah. Say this to me. Say, the pillar of cloud is around me said the pillar of fire is around me listen you know how I know that the pillar of fire is around you because that pillar was actually angelic presence if you read that story well the Bible says the angel of the Lord went from the front to the back and so did the pillar so it was an angel it was a manifestation of angelic presence it says he makes his angel spirits and ministers what? So I'm telling you, there's a pillar of fire around you. Hey! Eleria kapale kombe rahaya kombe letope pele koparato prete abaratombre. Listen, listen. Can you see it? Let me tell you something. Your business cannot go down the drain anyhow. There is a hedge of protection. Your health cannot deteriorate anyhow. You are not ordinary. In case you didn't know, I'm telling you. There is a pillar. The Bible says, Are they not ministering spirits? Sent forth to minister for those who are heirs of salvation. As you go about your, your divine purpose, you are heavily defended. Say heavy defense. Atakabaya. I'm telling you something I know about. I'm telling you something I know about. I'm telling you something I know about. You see, God is jealous about me. God is jealous about me. Sometimes I worry for people who don't like me. I genuinely do. I'm not telling you wishful thinking. I'm telling you something that was first a revelation in the word and an experience. If you carry me in your mind too long, you may be in trouble. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. Tell somebody by your side, say, I've got back in. I've got back in. <laughs> Heavy back in. Heavenly entourage. Hey, alakabaya. Reteke palatakabaya. Listen, I don't need to carry a tortoise. I don't need to wear any waist speed. I have backing, 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 backing. Backing. Try and you will find out. It says, for our God is a consuming fire. Try and find out. 
This is going to be a special service. Just speak in tongues for a bit. Stare yourself in the Holy Ghost. Stare yourself in the Holy Ghost. He fights for me. I hold my peace. Ah, he doesn't know this song. He fights for me. Give him call that back. I hold my peace. He fights for me. 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 Speak in tongues. I hold my peace. CCW, he fights for me. He fights for me. I hold my peace. Give me a hand there, Reba Haya. He fights for me. Oh, no, Beja. Oh, no, Beja. Hey, everybody join us. Say, he fights for me. He fights for me. and he goes to war. He, I want to hear you loud and clear. He fights for him. He fights for Help them with the ad lib. Oh, Make it louder. Come on. I want to hear you louder. He fights for me. Come on. Oh,
I hope. Maybe this is not for you. Let me talk to the person by your side. He fights for. I hold my. If it's for you, sing it loud. Let me hear you say. One more time. He fights. He fights for. Me. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That was a prophetic moment right there. Thank you, Lord. We give you the praise and the glory. You shall not need to fight, says the Lord. For all the years, the tears, the intimidation, the Lord says, now I have stepped in for your family. Stepped in. Stepped in. To terror the terrorists. And to torment the tormentors. Your defender has stepped in. Your defender has stepped in. Your defender has stepped in. For someone, the Lord says, for all the lies, accusations, things you never did, they said they did. He said, your defender has stepped in. It's time to hold your peace and let him fight. Let him get to work. It's time to lift up those burdens from off your shoulder and trust him. Because he fights for you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we've prayed. Amen. Come on, say a loud amen. amen. Hallelujah. Very quickly, media team, when I was stepping in, I noticed the audio isn't great in the over overflow. Please help them. And then if we can get one or two more fans there to make it um, properly ventilated, I would appreciate this. Just in case someone is here for the first time to your left, to your right, just help me greet them, give them a special celebration church welcome. Here you are. You look even better in real life. Praise the Lord. Greet someone else. They might have had a long week. Tell them Jesus is still on the throne. You don't look like what you've been through. It's going to be all right. I'm, I'm, I promise you that person may need that encouragement. Greet someone on the gallery for me. Say it's going to be all right. Say, cheer up, Jesus is alive. Yeah. Hallelujah, and please be seated. Oh, woo, woo. Woo. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is one of those sermons that I hope you will get. And I will just preach it Sorry, what's wrong with the audio all of a sudden? I will just preach it beginning to end, lead you in a session of prayer, and hope that God will crystallize it in your soul and in your spirit. Before I start, I want to take a moment to welcome those who are worshiping with us online. Can you say welcome? Yeah. Hallelujah. There is no distance in the realm of the spirit. It doesn't matter where you're worshiping with us um, virtually from, in the nooks and crannies of the world. The Word of God is living and active and present right where you are. And you are not excluded for, from any miracle that is happening in this place. However, I want to encourage you, try to find a church close to you, um, especially if you are in a city that has Celebration Church. If you are in Lagos, for instance, watching me online, you are wrong. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Media team, take a moment, fix whatever you need to fix. This sound... Is doing somehow.
give me a signal or something. Who am I looking at? Okay. Hallelujah. Is it the headpiece that needs adjustment or what? All right. All right. Praise the Lord. His name is Barnabas. So if, and if the sound doesn't work, you know who to pray for. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, let me say this to you. There are two categories of courses in the university. There are some courses that are called elective courses. The other categories are called what? Compulsory courses. And I believe that compulsory <laughs> believers authority is a compulsory course. You see, there are, some, there are some things you learn in school you will never use. Isn't that true? <laughs> Almost everything. <laughs> You know, and there are some things I'll never forget. I was in a particular class, business management, MBA school. And as the lecturer was teaching, I was like, wow, life is unfair. So you mean there are some people doing business who know this and others don't. Life is unfair. Because some topics are just too compulsory. Please, are you with me? Now, in theology, there are some things you learn and you'll be like, well, that's nice. You know, go use them. There are some debates that are not worth it. You get what I'm saying? Because they are not fundamental. But you see, when you come to the subject of believer's authority, this is something important. This is something radical. When you learn it, especially in its full magnitude, your life will never be the same again. I'm telling you. And so I want to take an approach that maybe has never been taken in this fashion before. And this is what I mean. Make no mistake. A lot of good stuff has been done on believer's authority. But I want to help you see how the understanding of believer's authority will lead to three things. Number one, personal transformation. Now you're wondering, what's the correlation? You will see in a minute. Personal transformation. Number two, national transformation. Oh, yes, you heard me right. National transformation. And number three, which is the one we often dwell on, spiritual victory. Just to be sure you're following, what's the first one? Now, let me tell you a true life story. So, you've heard the story of how I got filled with the Spirit in the first year of my university, and my life changed. I've been a church boy all my life, been in church, never missed a Sunday service, not to my knowledge, not to my re recollection. Always been in church. But you see, when I got filled with the Spirit, and the diet I was put on, reading Kenetagian books on believers' authority, on the name of Jesus, on who you are in Christ. It changed my life in such a radical way. And if I'm being honest, I didn't even know how practical and obvious that change was. Until one day, a lady came to me in school. She was three classes ahead of me and someone I looked up to, I mean, especially in my field, because we're in the same department. She came to me. She hadn't seen me in one month. And she looked at me. She said, Something is different about you. You are more confident. You dress better. You speak better. What has changed? I said, if I tell you, you won't believe. And she said, try. I said, I got filled with the Spirit. She laughed. I said, no, really. What is it? And I said, you see, I told you. I, I'm telling you, listen. And with all due respect, for some people it's not as dramatic and it doesn't mean it is less authentic, but I'm telling you the story of my life. When I got filled with the Spirit, my life changed. Changed drastically. Let me tell you something. There is such a thing as God esteem. Did you hear what I said? Have you heard that phrase before? It's a real thing. When you realize 
not in a religious way, but in a practical spiritual way, that God loved you enough to die for you, came to the earth for you, suffered for you, was dead three days for you, rose again, and then he gave you power. It changes your life. Let me tell you something. I've told you this many times, but there is that moment in everyone who has a genuine walk with God where you thought you were ordinary until an angel shows up or you discover it in the word of God. And then you, ordinary you, an angel is shouting, highly favored of God. You never saw yourself highly favored. It's a life-changing moment. When you discover your identity in God, your life changes. Are you listening to me? That's the story of my life. It's a particular mentality where you say, if God be for me, complete it for me. Who? Do you understand what I'm saying? Where the consciousness of the love of God, his sacrificial love, just changes your life. You now come to a place of confidence where you love everyone, but you don't depend on them for validation. If God loves me, Everyone who doesn't love me, there's something they are not saying. The problem is their sight. They need to adjust their Googles or maybe they need a recommendation for one. Because God loves me. Listen, I know I have a lot of work to do. But if God could look beyond that, see the best in me and die for me ahead of time. Ah, I can't give up on myself. I can't give up on myself. If you didn't give up on me, I can't give up on myself. Please, are you listening to this? You know, a lady came to my wife and said, she's depressed. My wife asked her why. She said, because her friend will not talk to her anymore. So my wife said, okay, how long was the relationship? She said, oh, no, we're not dating. No. Just female to female friend. Eh? Someone said they won't talk to you again, you are depressed. Listen to me. What can separate me from the love of God? Tribulation, distress, peril, nakedness. So I'm trying to show you that this is not a religious concept, this is a powerful. God esteem concepts in all these things. <laughs> are you listening to me? You are not in church. Let me try this side. I said in all these things. <laughs> Man, meaning you've been there, done that, got the t-shirt, and you still day. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're okay. You're okay. In all these things, I am more than a conqueror through him that loved me. I am persuaded what kind of mentality must you have to talk like that? When you can talk like when when you have this mentality, this same believer's authority we're learning on, when it dawns on you, two things. Number one, you will not depend on anybody for validation. Listen, I need to put this caveat. This does not mean you won't be open to criticism. Because some people <laughs> They use that as a cover not to receive constructive criticism. In fact, it's the opposite. When you have God's esteem, you can take feedback. People who battle low self-esteem cannot take feedback. They see it as an attack. But, but, but you can take it because you know it doesn't affect who you are. Come on, are you getting what I'm saying? But at the same time, you don't depend on the opinion of others for validation. God loves me. Don't you understand? I don't know if you've meditated on that before. This is not some fairy tale. Jesus loves me. Do you believe that? Ah. If you feel an ounce of it, it will change your life. To know the love of Christ, you will never be the same again. There's something I want to show you a deeper. Don't miss it, right? I'm, I'm itching to share it with you. 
but it will change your life. Let, let me tell you something. There aren't many people who can speak words to me and I will lose sleep. They're not up to 10 in this world. They will tell me, naturally, I thrive on confrontation. <laughs> I, th I thrive on confrontation. Like it makes it sweeter when you don't believe. It makes the story sweeter because I will so prove you wrong. Then I will watch you grapple with the embarrassment of trying to change your tongue. Don't worry, forget about it. Because some of you are judging me now. <laughs> but honestly, have you heard the phrase, one with God is majority? It's true. It's the mentality of Noah. You devote decades to building something that nobody believes in. Oh my God, you missed that. At the time of Noah, are you aware rain had never fallen before? You are building something. Think about that as a creator, as a business owner. You've spent decades building something that no one believes in and you didn't stop. You didn't stop. It's God esteem. <laughs> God esteem. Nobody believes in you, but you keep building. Nobody encouraged just him and his family. Some historians say it took 60 years to build that ark. 60. 60 years. Nobody believed and he didn't stop. He was right. There's a type of esteem, eh? even if the whole world does not believe, you stay. As long as you are sure, some people are under the delusion that it is God and it is not God. That's a different thing. <laughs> Do you understand? But when you are sure, ah, my God, listen, when the Lord called me, you couldn't talk me out of it. Hey, you could not. You could not. <laughs> Those of you who have known me for a while know. You keep, you keep, <laughs> And the people who went ahead following their own plan for their lives, I mean God's plan for their own lives, I was happy for them, but it didn't deter me. You have a good job. I'm happy for you. 2015, my allowance in this ministry was 2,500 weekly. Are you listening to me? Don't worry. <laughs> That's why I say... There's some people, when God begins to bless them and you complain, God can punish you. I'm not joking, no. That's <laughs> swear go just land. Hallelujah. I said you will stop seeking validation from outside, right? And then number two, this is important, and please don't misunderstand it. Allow me land. Are you ready for this? When you receive this God esteem, you will understand this. Let me land. Nobody is better than you. Did you hear what I said? Nobody is better than you. Listen, in the task that God created you to fulfill, nobody is better than you. Why am I saying this? Because we are all equal in the sight of God. Are you aware of that? Hi. It is one thing to agree with what I'm saying. It's another thing to believe it. I've traveled out. I can tell you a lot of Africans have low self-esteem. Do you really, truly believe that indeed all things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, the Lord God made them all? You believe that, right? White, black, Nobody is better than you. They may be different, special for their own assignments, but they are not better than you. Listen, I want to see it in your eyes that you believe what I'm saying. Do you believe what I'm saying? Yeah. 
Jesus died for me. Jesus died for me. I can never consider myself ordinary. I can never consider myself common. Peter says, reckon that it was not with perishable things such as gold or silver that you were purchased with. He says, but with the precious blood of Christ. Ah, I'm special. Because in economics, you recognize the value of something by the price paid for it. Isn't that true? What is the price that was paid for you? You are special. <laughs> Some of you, it's taking you time to receive this. So let me hammer down. Nobody does what you do like you. There are people who may sing better than you, but they don't sing like you. There are people who draw better than you, design better than you, but they don't design like you. See, what I'm saying, eh? just believe it. So many billions of people in the earth, God in his wisdom and providence decided that you were needed. You are here for a divine assignment. Believe it. An angel doesn't have to come to your room and shout. See it in the world. Have you seen it in the world? Come on, let me ask you this. Have you seen anybody who has a solid work with God and is not confident? Not one. You, you cannot encounter God, the God of the Bible, and be intimidated. Eh? You may be a shepherd boy. You stand before Pharaoh, the world power of the day, who was literally worshipped as a god at the time and say this is what the Lord says let my people go I'm explaining the force behind purpose you want to be a success in life in God's assignments understand what I'm telling you believers authority is a mentality a mentality that breeds personal transformation and now get ready for this one I want to move to national transformation now and get ready the teaching is starting is your thinking cap on? But first, before we move on, say nobody's better than me. Say I'm bought with a price. Say I'm special. All right, now let's move to national transformation. Listen, oh my God. <laughs> oh Lord, help them understand. First and foremost, let me say this to you. One of the most recurrent ideologies in the Bible, one of the statements that, were, that was um, how do I put this? One of the statements that was repeated very often in the New Testament is this. God is no respecter of persons. Have you read that in your Bible before? Peter, in Cornelius' house, said, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. The Bible says, for there is no respect of persons with God. Do you know how radical this is? Not just as a religious concept, not just as a Bible concept, but as a concept of natural, tra national transformation, this is a powerful and radical philosophical idea. No respect of persons with God. Let me tell you this. Listen, I, I heard Miles Moreau say this years ago, and it changed my life, and I, I hope it will change yours. He said something that I researched myself, and it's true. There is something called Greek ideology, all right? When it comes to leadership, there is a Greek ideology. And how does that concern you? It concerns you a lot. Because the Roman Empire inherited the Greek Empire, all right? And the Greek Empire was the ones that broke into several nations that colonized many nations in Africa. So you don't understand how what I'm saying is relevant to your context. Please follow closely. Now, the Greek leadership philosophy had three presuppositions. Number one, leadership is a product of providence. That by God's divine providence, some people were destined to be leaders and others to be slaves. They believe that. They believe that leadership was a product of divine providence. And that by no choice of yours, some people are more special than you. They believed this. They taught it. They practiced it. 
Are you in church today? Now, okay, so what is the basis of that providence? They believe that it was a product of natural endowments. That if you were sent by the gods, you will have natural and physical advantages. They believe this. It gets more ridiculous. Just follow me. And number three, they believed it was a product of birth traits. Research all that I'm saying. They believed that if you were sent by the gods, you will have pointed nose. If you were sent by the gods, someone is already like, give up. I'm, I'm definitely not. <laughs> the way your nose spread like rumor. <laughs> Stop looking at my own nose. Are you ready for this? They believed if you were sent by the gods, you will have blue eyes. And that you will have a fair pigmentation. Follow this and understand how important this is. Mm. Oh Lord, help us today. The Roman Empire imploded, divided into several nations like France, Portugal, and so many other nations. These were the nations that came to Africa to colonize. Are, are you following now? And just imagine coming to a land filled with people with dark skin, wide nose, black eyes. They were just like, wow. So many slaves. The gods have blessed us with people who could save us. Listen, this is deeper than you realize. This was a mentality. Do you understand? See, it wasn't, it was deeper than racism. Hmm? It was a divine philosophy. They believed it. They believed it. That just by your physical traits, there was a ceiling over you. And even the time when blacks started going to school, if you went to school and you became the best in your class, they saw you as a smart slave. That's what you are. And if you were fighting for expression, they saw you as rebellious because they genuinely believed if God wanted more from you, he would have given you. So you have to understand, it's a deeper issue when they tell Rosa Parks, you are not supposed to be sitting here. They, they really believe it. And then, the Bible says, I perceive that God is no respect. Oh my God. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? That there is no respect of persons with God. Radical idea. Let me show you some text that you might have read before, but it is going to have new meaning. Galatians chapter 3 verse 28. I want you to read this Scream it as loud as you can. One, two, go. There is neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female, for you are all what? One in Christ Jesus. Listen, you may not understand the idea of Mark 16, 17. It says, go, preach the gospel to every creature. It says, they that believe and are baptized shall be saved. It says, and this sign shall follow them that believe. Not the elites. Them that believe, everybody. That in the gospel, you have the concept of priesthood of all nations. That nobody needs to go to God on your behalf. Hey, are you listening to this? That you have the audacity, the right, the privilege in the name of Jesus to stand before the presence of God without fear and without inferiority. Even God. How 
can you have the mentality of standing before God without fear and inferiority by the grace of God in Christ then stand before a man and feel less I'm letting you know how believers authority changes your life it will change a nation I'm telling you because a nation is as great as it treats the common people the so called common people and let me tell you something when we realize that every one of us rich poor great and small we are all imago Dei, created in the image of God that's a radical concept it was very easy to colonize Africa because let me tell you something are you ready for what I'm about to say first and foremost our culture had the infrastructure for such a superiority complex to thrive. Because in our culture, we treat rich people as though they are better than us. You are not ready. In our culture, It was easy, at least for the kings, to relate with them and say, you know what, okay, how many do you want? In exchange for what? Mirror. Oh, you've not read some of the stories? Oh, you will give us mirror? Okay, take like five. There is something about our culture that permitted such. Okay, right now, the colonial masters have gone. Have we changed? Look at the people we elected treating us as if they are doing us a favor. That an elected official we want to give maybe a rise to a community and put his face on it. As if, do you understand what I'm saying? With, 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 with your money, do you genuine, how many, how many citizens genuinely believe that the leaders are not better than them? That they are there to serve them? How many, how many believe that? And this is why this is a radical idea. The priesthood of all people standing before God as equal. Come on, are you with me? And that's why we must defend this in church. Let me tell you something. No matter how great you are, practice being normal, if not anywhere else, in the presence of God. That's one thing I love and respect churches like RCCG for. You don't know who is parking your car. You are welcome, sir. Park it. When you see the person's portfolio, you'll be shocked that people who own banks, industries, are cleaning the toilets in the service of God. It's a powerful idea, I'm telling you. Powerful idea. Powerful idea. If there is any place that reminds us that we're all equal in the sight of God, it should be church. Are you listening to me? Where everybody, no matter how big or small your crown is, you cast it down in worship. And sing to the Lord your God, your maker. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. Say loud, amen. You know why I'm taking my time with this? Understand this. Low self-esteem is a spiritual attack. <laughs> you see, a lot of people don't know the devil. A lot of, let me tell you something. A lot of people, their idea of Satan came from Nollywood. Came from Nigerian movies. 
But when you study the devil, you will understand that the basis of his warfare is ideologies. Are you listening to me? So when he shows on the scene, he's not there to fight Eve, literally. He says, did God say, this is a battle of ideologies. Let me tell you this. Any ideology that puts a lot of people down and was successful, there were spirit entities behind it. If you don't understand that Hitler cannot successfully convince an entire generation that they are better than some other race of people without the help of spirit entities, you have a lot to learn. You know, we might be having one of the most naive generations ever. <laughs> you know, there are some things we know we can't say. What a naive generation. So the Bible tells us, right? It says, hmm, remember where we, we stopped last week? We wrestle not, remember? Against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness of this age, all right? So we're talking about spirit entities. They will be manifesting in a practical way, but recognize there are spirit entities sponsoring these ideas. And what did he say you should do? Take on the belt of truth, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. Everything he said you should take has to do with knowledge. Think about it. Maybe it never dawned on you. It has to do with knowledge. Knowledge is your defense in spiritual warfare. Knowledge is your defense. Shield of faith, information. Faith is information. Truth is information. Salvation is information. Righteousness is information. It's a battle of ideologies. Casting down what? Oh my God. I want to hear you louder. Casting down what? Imaginations. And every high thing that exalts itself against what? The knowledge of God. Let me tell you something. Are you aware that no matter how great your destiny in God is, if someone can persuade you that because of the skin of your color, there is a level of greatness you cannot attain, it can affect you. Now, that spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare can be perpetrated through ideas. Through ideas. Can I open my heart to you? I don't like the life that many of our people have taken in diaspora. I don't like it. I know this country is hard, but you settled. You settled. Don't lie. You settled. You settled. I look at even the people who are doing well earning 8,000 pounds per month. That's very well. And then house rent is 3,000 pounds per month. I don't care what you say. That's slavery. Now, you hardly have free time. You have to, now, you even have to work on Sunday to make ends meet. If you have to do that for a stage, that's okay. But I'm saying you can't, you, you can't continue like this. And what's the consolation? That when you are 60, there will be free health care and free transportation. Don't you get it? What if God has more in store for you? Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. In all labor, in all labor, there is dignity. So don't get me wrong. But 
there are some people who are washing plates that have no business washing plates. You settled. But that's not even where I'm going. I'm, I'm just here to highlight the fact that behind these ideologies, I'm using just racism as an example. Please, are you with me? Get me right. I hope you know we have Caucasian members of this church, and I love them very much. So. But there, there are spirit entities behind these ideas. Did you ever notice, maybe you didn't pay attention, what really was the exodus of Egypt about? What was it about? Okay, you want to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. And of all things, you say, Moses, go and drop your rod in the temple, in the palace. He drops his rod. His rod. It turns to a serpent. They drop their own rods. It turns to a serpent. And then his rod swallows their rods. What is this about? Listen, someone might be looking from a political standpoint and say, oh, well, this is a political issue. Uh, we need liberation from these Egyptians. This the Jews are slaves. But it was a spiritual battle. Are you aware? And this is why in Exodus chapter 12, I think verse 12, God said, I will pass through the land of Egypt and I will judge the gods of Egypt. It was a contest of gods. Do you realize that all the plagues were supposed to expose the inability of the Egyptian gods? That there was a god in charge of frogs the multiplication of frogs they worshiped that god and so by that plague god was exposing the fact that that god was in oh come on are you getting it now it was about gods i am helping you see a spiritual par parallel for political issues you thought it was pharaoh who held the people captive it was the gods of Egypt and until those gods were exposed and judged the people couldn't be free I am letting you know the people who just say just get your PVC we are just praying what will prayer do you are so ignorant you are ignorant it looked like a political issue but it was a contest of gods are you listening to me let me tell you something. You don't know the people. Jesus. Sometimes I miss when I was less famous. Some of your leaders have covenanted with deities on your behalf. wake up there are some roads they cannot construct without sacrifice you know that one Abi. oh but it's just traditional it's tradition Daniel there was a political issue the Jews had been in captivity for 70 years Daniel believed that they ought to be free he understood by books that they ought to be free so he didn't just start a political campaign. He started praying. And then when he started praying, an angel showed up. But showed up like three weeks late. And said, from the time you started praying, <laughs> I, you know, Gabriel wanted to come to you. But the prince of Persia, and you're like, wait, wait, prince of Persia, the one in the palace. No! There is a parallel government. There is a prince in the palace and there is another prince. Oh my, are you listening to me? Yes, <laughs> the prince in the palace is doing his own. <laughs> There's another prince in the atmosphere. Prince of Persia. You don't understand how deep these issues are. 
parallel governments. The good news is, Jesus has defeated all of them. So let me quickly explain this to you, and you may need to listen to my teachings on Believer's Authority deeper for Tarkod last year. Let me explain this to you. When God gave man the earth, because angels are ministering spirits sent for to minister for those who are heirs of salvation, he put angels in charge of territories. Do you understand what I'm saying? They were called sons of God, all right? You know... <laughs> And that's what the psalmist was referring to when I said, I have said you are God, children of the Most High, but you shall die like men. Because they were judging in an unjust way, God now judged them. So listen, apart from the fall at the beginning of the world, the one many people talk about Lucifer carrying one third of the angels, whether it happened that way indeed or not, a conversation for another day. But there were so many other falls because there were people, angels and spirit entities in charge of territories that rebelled rebelled against God. So you have to understand the prince of Persia, for instance, is a fallen angel. Angel Michael, Michael was the angel in charge of Israel, for instance. His other counterparts, many of them, fell. And they became, are you with me? Principalities and powers. They were governing over lands. How does this concern you? You have to understand that even for spiritual activity to thrive in some, in some places, the atmosphere has to be taken care of. And I'm not telling you something that will happen. I'm explaining something that has happened in Christ. So now, this is the part behind the scenes that a lot, a lot of people don't see. The disciples went out to preach and they came back excited. Follow this closely. They came back excited. Wow. Demons were subject to us in your name. You know what Jesus said? What did Jesus say? I saw what? I saw Satan fall. This is why you were successful. Oh, God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you aware that things can shift in the atmosphere, it is legally true, it can become actually true for you as a believer, and then your day to day experience will just change. Things have been difficult for you and they become easy. Because the principalities and powers have fallen, you just have to see them fall. Come on, are you with me? This is what believers' authority does. With the eyes of the spirit, you see what Christ saw. I saw Satan fall like lightning. Come on, are you with me? We are talking about trampling on the enemy. You can only trample on an enemy that you have seen who is falling. Do you understand? That's what I'm trying to show you. Your victory in your daily Christian walk is preempted by first seeing Satan falling. Jesus has the victory. Are you with me? Jesus has the victory over Lagos. Jesus has the victory over Nigeria. Jesus has the victory over America. Jesus has the victory over the entire Europe and Asia and Russia and North and South America. Do you believe this? He has the victory over China. Listen, I am teaching you how to war. You war first with the conviction. He has the victory. When he died, was raised back to life, he came back, he said, all power! Oh my God! Do you believe the word of God? Listen to me, I'm explaining why you cannot fail. He said, all power in heaven and earth have been given to me. Go therefore! I'm explaining why our church grows and spreads everywhere like the devil doesn't exist. All power. Did he say some? All power in heaven and earth have been given to me. He said, go therefore. Go therefore. Go therefore. 
He first conquered all before he sent you. It means in your divine assignment, nothing can stop you. You believe that? He said, you are seated with him in heavenly places, far above. You see that thing that happened in Daniel's time? It can never happen again. When you pray, your angels go without hindrance. Are you listening to me? Those days are gone. Those days are gone. Those days are gone. Those days are... Listen, don't forget, he, he saw Satan fall. There is no prince of Ikeja <laughs> hindering your prayers anymore. This is why you have speedy answers. Speedy answers. Do you believe it? Yes, sir. He said, you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem. In Judea, in Samaria, in the utmost part of the earth. He has scanned all those places. No principality, no power. You must believe this. <laughs> you know, I went to a leading university in, in the United States of America. This is where I knew there was a problem. As I was about to see one of the lecturers... The key leaders in the university. The person who was taking me said, please, let me just give you a heads up. He's weird, but he's not a racist. Ah, I said, this one, you are saying it. This one, you are giving me a heads up. And then this man went into one long theological discourse of how the soil in Africa is cursed. And that... And the atmosphere, the heaven over Africa is closed. This is a white man. He was telling me this. You want to know the interesting thing? What he said is not exactly false. It's not just current. Go and read the story of the leper that the prophet cleansed. When he was going, he took some soil from Jerusalem. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because he felt that the, the earth there was sacred. I am telling you, not all atmospheres are the same. There, there are some places I go to and the air is cleaner. Even though UK is worse than Nigeria. You know, now just hype. I can tell you the witchcraft here is learning. <laughs> my second day in the US, I was in McDonald's. Whether you believe this or not is fine. What I'm about to say doesn't affect the gospel. And I'm not trying to impress you. So if you don't believe it, it's fine. I was in McDonald's and a witch, a witch flew over. Ah! I told the person, I said, they are here. It works. <laughs> I can tell you our own is learning work. So he was wrong. Even if there's any secret soil, I assure you it's not US. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> Maybe Israel. US. Secret waiting. Let me say this prophetically. Everywhere God has sent you to, you will prosper there. Amen. Because the heaven is open. The heaven over you is open. Can you see Satan falling? That's why he said, behold, I give you power. Trample. You don't fall, march and fall. You don't understand what I'm saying? I give you power. Trample on the enemy. It means take strides as if he's falling. Take steps as if he's falling. Make decisions as if he's falling. Stop factoring him. Do you understand what I'm saying? He's no more a factor. Move. Do stuff. Do stuff in the name of Jesus. I give you power to trample upon serpents and scorpions. And over every ability of the enemy, he says, listen, this is the good part. And nothing... <laughs> Do 
Do you believe that? Right there on your seat, you're speaking tongues. Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. Thank you, Jesus. I trample on the enemy. Say, I walk men and miracles. Say. I will always be victorious, sing, and I do the impossible, sing. Listen, do you realize this was the sound God gave us before our ministry exploded? Maybe it never dawned on you. This is not music. This is a prophetic channel to lead you and launch you into your prophetic destiny. I trample on the enemy, say. I walk many miracles, say. I will always be victorious, say. And I do the impossible, say. I trample on the enemy, say, I want you to picture it as you do it. I walk many miracles, say, I will always be victorious, say, and I do the impossible. Are you ready to do impossible things? I trample on the enemy say I walk man the miracle say yeah I will always be victorious say and I do the impossible say
Ay, 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 say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You need to understand how relevant what we're teaching is to the theme of the year. You can't occupy without understanding this. Understand that the principalities and powers have been disarmed. So everywhere God sends you to, you can deal with freedom. You have the legal right and privilege to deal without obstruction. I trample on the enemy, say, I walk many miracles, say, I will always be victorious. Say, no matter the obstruction. And I do the impossible. Say, I want to give you two more times to do this prophetically. I trample on the enemy. Say, I walk many miracles. Say, I will always be victorious. Say, and I do the impossible. Say, Hallelujah. You want to pray one prayer? This is not for everybody. It is for those who believe and for those who have an assignment in this direction. This is the word of the Lord. The very things for which God drove the inhabitants of the promised land, he drove them out. The very things for which he drove them out are being perpetrated by the media. And because of that, the same God who created vacant space for his people is creating vacancies. You see? Mind you, the prophecy is different. This one, the light will shine in spite of the darkness. The darkness, listen, the darkness will not go away, but it will not comprehend. There will always be a clear-cut remnant till Christ comes. Are you listening to this? And all God wants you to do is to take your place. Take your space. Occupy the position that God has given you. And why won't you do that? There is no obstruction. Nothing hinders you. So everyone, it doesn't matter your assignment in ministry, in media, in politics, I am telling you prophetically, you are sponsored to occupy space. So I'm going to give you a few minutes. You will pray in the spirit violently. As you are praying in the spirit, you are also praying in your understanding and saying in the name of Jesus, I take my place in God's end time prophetic agenda. I give you a few minutes for this. Do it as seriously as you believe it. As seriously as you believe it.
mighty name we have prayed. Now in the name of Jesus, take your position. I'm seeing so many prophetic things. There's a lady here. I see the angel of the Lord put a key in your hand. And that key will open the door of influence. And that influence, like an Esther, you will govern for God. I said you will govern for God. It's a key of international policy making. Policy making. Policy making. There is a young man here. I'm seeing you and I'm seeing a governorship seat in the east close to you. And the Lord is asking me to tell you that in no distant future, he will Preto Vereteleco Redo Stefres the Trete Sute Embereso Tekibo Coperia Tofres. Mark these words. The person I'm talking about. You are a technocrat. You are not even really interested in it, but you love this nation. The Lord is asking me to tell you, when the time is right, he will open the doors. You will know without an, a shadow of doubt that it is the Lord asking you to do it, and he will make it easy, and nothing will be able to stop you. For the Lord says, I have trained you for it, and I am training you for it, and it has to be done. Thank you, Father. Glory to your name. And for every assignment, big and small, you know, when you hear governorship, international policy, you think that that's all there is. But you have a part to play. Are you listening to me? And in the name of Jesus, when you stand before God, you would have done all he asked you to do. No stone will be left unturned. No territory will be left untaken. In the mighty name of Jesus, the sponsorship is upon you. The grace is upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ato Christi Cristo Fretila Trostevara to Crestiga. Balendum preside que pele to Cristo trequida, barazo frestige son trequida, arrasatege loquida, el eco polendum presetiga barato fresetige, en de lecopoya. Now listen to me. In the name of Jesus, the angels of your destiny, you begin to walk with them more than ever before. You receive messages from them. You receive feedback from them. Amen. Your eyes are opened. Amen. Your ears are open. Experience supernatural advantage. Amen. And according to the will of God, every nation you go to, the name of Jesus will work for you there. Amen. I stretch my hand to someone here. The Lord is asking me to tell you, listen to this. Your money that has been tied up is released. Yeah. I said your money that had been tied up is released. And I'm praying this prophetically for some people here. You see, if you don't want to relocate, it should be a choice, not a limitation. It should be a choice. For the sake of your divine assignments, the doors of nations are open to you. They are open to you.
MOJ, for the sake of the divine assignment, the doors of nations are open to you. Let the gates begin to open. Mm. Thank you, Father. Give him praise, give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Listen, I want to give you just a few more minutes. I want you to use your authority, all right? I might not have the time. You see, prophetic gifts can be limited because of time, but in your own context, things you know about, things God has told you about, use your authority and declare words now. I give you just a few minutes. Speak specifically. Specifically. Speak specifically. Speak specifically. 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 Specifically, told me the Lord says He has just started with you. He has just started with you. He has just started with you. Specifically, specifically, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I give you a few minutes to praise him for it. Just praise him for it. 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 Praise him. Sing him a song. 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 He will do as he has said. CCW, pick it up. Yes, she. Yes, Ebami bo rukore, 
Are you afraid? Will he do all that he has said? Give him one final loud praise in this house. Thank you, Lord. You ought to run about say, hey! You know, I said it at Trown 30 some weeks back. I was praying about something for this ministry. And then the Lord dropped that song in my spirit. It was bragging. <laughs> Calm down. God has just started with us. What God is about to do in this church, I, my God, you think it's been wonderful? Calm down. So he, before, before he told us what he would give us, he first reminded me, I own up. I own down. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Just one more time. Oba. Come on, everybody. Come on. Thank 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He will give you things you cannot brag about. Give you things that when they ask you about, you will start crying. That's, that's your reply. And your response will be, who am I? Who is my father's house? Amen. Amen. I'm trying to move on from this. Oloruko. Oloruko. Do you know who your God is? Oloruko. <laughs> There's just a stir in my spirit. <laughs> Put up that metronome. There's one vibe song. Very simple. God, you are great. You are great. I see happen. I see you talk about. Lord, you are great. Lord, you are great. Lord, you are great, Lord. Lord, you are great. As you may happen, as you. Just one more time, I beg you. Lord, you are great, Lord. Lord, you are great. Lord, you are great. You are great. You are great. You are great. You
church organization, I see a powerful church. See, what God is set to do in some of your lives. Eh? <laughs> Hallelujah. And let me tell you something. We are a breed with no greed. We know how to use things without things getting into us. So how do I tell you? I've seen many of you entering into your house and saying, Lord, you are great. You are great. I say, your dance now. Lord, 
God is up to something. Hallelujah. Please, if you're giving your tithe this morning or you gave it last week, please stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Say with me, Lord Jesus, I honor you with a tenth of my income, recognizing you as my source. Say you are my source. My job is just a vehicle. My business is just a vehicle. You are my source. I honor you and put you first, and I thank you that I'm replenished to abound more generously. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Please be seated. Thank you, Jesus. There's one of you who stood up. It's been in your spirit to own real estate abroad, shortlets, and the Lord is using me to confirm it now, go ahead, all right, go ahead, go ahead, thank you Jesus, and he will give you the wisdom, he will tell you how to go about it, but go ahead, thank you Lord, all right, offerings, building projects, um, like I said, there are many updates, I do not want to give <laughs> about building project, but I can tell you, um, I think by deeper, by the grace of God, we'll have a more concrete information. But God is up to something amazing. I ain't gonna jinx it. But, um, but, but now, the thing with great opportunities is that often you need a great amount of money to pay once. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. So please, um, continue to partner with us. Continue to redeem your pledges. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Have you given your offering yet? Hmm, I was talking. I didn't do that. Um, whilst we're at it, are there any announcements we can quickly take? Please welcome Pastor Ify. 
can you believe she just had a baby and, and she looks this amazing? Eh, Brother Dave, what's the Lord saying? <laughs> Don't worry. Um, Thank you so much, sir. Good morning, church. All right, very quickly, we know it's deeper Lagos this week, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, just to inform you once again, it's 29th of March. If you are joining us probably for the first time, Deeper Lagos is one amazing program you do not want to miss. And we want to share the following information with you to help you be better prepared. Doors will be open by 7 a.m. for the first session. Note that entry will not be permitted before this time. Also, everyone should maintain orderliness in the general waiting area. The only parking allowed will be at the Orego High School. And we have provided shuttle buses to convey you from the parking lot to the venue. Cabs and private vehicles will not be allowed into the venue. Once again, the venue is at Main Hall Plot 83C, Ikosi Road, Ikeja. To help you better know it, it was where Reboot Camp held. Hallelujah. All right, we prayed for it and it is here. CCI Egbeda has its inaugural service on the 31st of March. Glory to God. This is Easter Sunday. If you live in Egbeda or its environs, we don't expect you to be here on Easter Sunday. Ensure to do church at CCI Egbeda by 9 a.m. Ensure to invite a friend, set your alarm and prepare your outfits because it's going to be an unforgettable experience. Glory to God. Apostle has told us, make sure you do not miss prayers all through this week. We continue in favor and ensure to tune in 6 a.m., 12 noon, and 8 p.m. on our YouTube channel, Triumph 30 Live. Midweek services continue at Ikeja on Thursdays, the Caris Event Center by 6 p.m. It was the birthdays of some really special people and we want to celebrate them this morning. Happy birthday, Damilare. Peace, goodness, Ayomide, Olajumoke, Joshua, Myron, Tinuade, Daniel, Genevieve, Demilade, Esther, Olatunji, Laya, and Lade. And what do we say to them? Happy birthday. Welcome to your best year yet, and we love you so much. It's been a most amazing service. But we don't bring it to an end without recognizing those who are doing service with us for the first time on a Sunday morning. If it is your first time at CCI Ikeja, please be on your feet. We want to welcome you very specially. with us this morning we mean it when we say you are answered prayers and because we want to let you know how much we love you and show how you can grow with us in assembly we've got gentlemen and ladies on the aisle who would like to share a couple of information with you very quickly so we'd like you to pick up whatever you came to church with and follow those who are along the aisle they'll take you do i believe it's the gallery the gallery they'll take you to the They'll take you to the overflow right outside and very quickly they'll be done with sharing that information with you. Also, if it is your second time, please wave your hands. Wave your hands. Thank you for coming back again. We like to say that your experience was so good. You came twice. We hope you make it twice and together we will rise. To so make sure we rise together right after the service. Do not run away. Please come to this end of the hall. By my left, there will be a leader and a pastor who want to get to know you better. So please, don't be a visitor in church. We look forward to speaking with you right after the service. I don't have to ask you if it has been an amazing service. It has been an amazing service. Why not jump up on your feet? And what sort of week are you going to have? Stay concerning yourself. This is the week where I walk 
in the consciousness of the authority I have. God has made the way for me. I walk recognizing who I am in him. I'm not afraid. I'm not perturbed. I know who I carry on my inside. I trample because I know that Jesus has already won the victory for me. I go out confident. My esteem is great. I have God esteem. I know who I am on the inside and I walk as such. I conquer territories. I occupy what God has in store for me. I receive it consciously. Ah, Katali Borom they can shut up. Is that your prayer this afternoon? This week I reign and I rule. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We end service at Celebration Church in a very special way. Are we ready to take our benediction together? All right, then one, two, go. We serve God by His Spirit. We boast in Christ Jesus. We put no confidence in the flesh. We experience progress and joy in the faith. Reaching a billion souls in 10,000 cities because we are.